monstrous assurance of this race of puny bipeds with overblown egos. The creature who calls himself man. He believes he owns the earth, and every living thing on it exists only for his benefit. Yet how foolish he is. Consider, even the lowly insect that man trods underfoot outweighs humanity several times and outnumbers him by countless billions. In the continuing war for survival between man and the hexapods, only another fool would bet against the insect. Let a man or woman venture from the well-beaten path of civilization, let him cross the threshold of the limited intellect, and he encounters amazing, wondrous things, the unknown and terrible. If he escapes these weird adventures with his life, he will usually find he left his reason behind him. Perhaps that is what happened to these two souls, lost in the great Mexican desert. But then, ask yourself, why would anyone trod from the usually well-traveled roads of this modern age, from the luxury of an air-conditioned automobile? It's difficult for our modern world of statistics and electronics to accept miracles. But you could almost call this a miracle, a genuine miracle. Out of hundreds and thousands of square miles of heat and seared wasteland, where the vultures wait for the other vultures to die, an American oil surveyor has chosen to explore this particular terrible corner of the earth, the Muerto Desert, the desert of death. This surveyor can hardly credit his eyes. Perhaps they're only elusive images produced by roasting the optic nerves. But if they do exist, if they are living things from somewhere, one fact is certain. Miracle or not, they will not be living things for long. The Muerto Desert, true to its name, will soon convert them into dead things. got across that desert to lie in the sun's bound to have cooked their brains. It's a miracle to me how Peppy and Frank found them. Well, I better be getting back to work. Beats me how they got there, or what they were doing. That's the most godforsaken spot on Earth. Maybe they're from that missing plane we read about. That plane was headed for Mexico City. Have to be 100 degrees off to land in the Muerto Desert. 100 degrees or not, they had to come from somewhere. Where'd you say you picked them up, Peppy? On the road to Sarpa Mesa, Senor Medico. Pretty girl under all that sunburn. She was almost completely dehydrated. I don't know what kept them alive. <laughs> you're all right, you're safe. You're in an oil company office. You sure? She's in about the same shape you are. She hasn't come out of it yet, but I think you're both gonna be all right. Here, try to take this. you think you were anyway, Superman? Sure. Nobody's ever been able to walk across that desert and come out alive. You try with a girl. You said this was an oil company. Can you load a truck with full drums and bring all the men you can spare? If we get there in time, maybe we can... And what? Burn them out before they scatter. That's the only thing that scares them, fire. But if we're too late, we're done. Now, just a minute, young fella. Take it easy. You've been out in the sun too long. That's sort of a book quiet on down on the I tell you, I don't know. You haven't seen him, but if you had, you'd realize you'd seen him. Now look, you said Superman. Well, these are super monsters or bugs. As big as we are, they can they can they can kill you with one bite. What can? These these these, these things. I, 
If they scatter before we get there, we... <coughs> Where do they come from? He's got a... an underground lab up on Zarpa Mesa. He does something to their glands. Who does? Dr. Aranya. Aranya? Ay, caramba. I told you the sun had cooked their brains. Pepe doesn't think so. And besides, nobody's ever been able to climb Zarfa Mesa. But you can reach it by plane. Let's listen to a story anyway. What have we got to lose? Well, uh, it all started on the border a few days back. I had a pilot for Jan Van Croft, the big financier. Well, we had engine trouble. I made a forced landing in a field outside this little Mexican town. After we landed, I stayed with the with the ship to... Quite a story he's telling, isn't it, Pepe? You heard from your people about Sarpa Mesa and the mysterious Dr. Aranya, even though your bosses haven't. So, why tell them? They would only laugh at you and say, poor Pepe, you're getting old. But you've heard for years about the grotesque and misshapen people, about the women, strange women who do not die. No, Grant Philip doesn't know the whole story. You see, he came into it rather late. It actually began, oh, almost a year ago. The night Dr. Leland Masterson, the world-famous specialist and researcher, found himself in the middle of the Muerto Desert, the desert of death. He came in answer to a rather mysterious summons from a man he admired, but knew only as a name signed to a series of brilliant scientific treatises, Aranya. Oh, we've arrived. eyes must be playing tricks on you in this light. Is that what you think, Masterson? What was it you thought you saw? Apparently, they've come correctly. But uh, to Masterson, it seems strange. A man with the genius of Aranya building his laboratory on an inaccessible mountaintop in the middle of an uninhabited desert. Why Zarpa Mesa? Why Zarpa Mesa, indeed? A natural question, Doctor, and one that was soon to be answered. Though in a way so fantastic and horrible as to make a man of science doubt his senses. Masterson, Dr. Leland Masterson. I believe Dr. Rania is expecting me.
systems of insects. Dr. Masterson, Dr. Aranya. I trust your journey was pleasant. Well, moderately. I must confess, though, that I was a trifle uneasy when your driver headed into the Muerto Desert. But everything seems to have worked out. The sentiment of the human mind being what it is, this is the only sort of a place I could find to carry on my work. But I can understand your feelings. These papers on the anterior lobe of the pituitary and the effects of the specific hormones on other living things. Quite the most remarkable endocrine theories that I've ever read. Well, thank you, Doctor. You're coming from the world's foremost organotherapist, a fine compliment. <laughs> That's why I jumped at the chance to come here, work with you, examine your theories. Oh, let us understand one thing, Doctor. These are not theories. Not theories? I have successfully proved every point over and over again in my laboratory. Wait a minute. You want me to believe that you have produced these things by experimentation? And many more. And my eyes weren't playing tricks. So you can see why such work as this must be completed inside a mountaintop amidst this desolation. Oh. I'm completing a most unusual experiment in my laboratory. Doctor, would you care to observe? Well, certainly. Come along. substance which controls the growth pattern of human beings. Yeah, so was the subject of one of your papers. Yes, and with this accomplished, I said to myself, what would the effect be of uh, this hormone or a complete human pituitary being transferred in the body of another creature? I began a series of experiments. Moderate success among the lesser animals, a complete failure among birds. And then, experimenting one day upon the hexapods, I came upon the Therophysidia family. The tarantula? Exactly. The tarantulas began to yield amazing results. They grew as large as human beings. Began developing new reasoning powers. And I found I had the telepathic power to communicate with them. And then I reversed the process, transplanted the control substance of the insect back into the human body. Doctor, observe this girl. I call her Talentella. She has human beauty and intelligence still possesses the capacities and instincts of the giant spider. How do you mean? She has the indestructibility of the insect. If her body became damaged, if she were to lose an arm or a leg, she could grow a new one. I expect Tarantella may survive for hundreds and hundreds of years. And what about males? Well, unfortunately, in the insect world, the male is a puny, unimportant thing. You saw a few of the examples. The dwarfs. I think we're beginning to get some results. What is it? If we are successful, I shall have a super female spider with a thinking and reasoning brain. A creature that someday may control the world. Subject to my will. Convinced 
now, Doctor. I hope you appreciate this opportunity I'm giving you to become a colleague of mine. No. No. You can't do these things. You can't bring with the work of the Creator. Gibberish. You're evil. This place is like... You must be destroyed. You want all the foul things that you've made. You made a choice, Doctor. A very poor choice. Of course, you know I cannot let you leave this place. Some way, somehow, I'll find a way to put an end to you, you ghastly experiments. <laughs> I was hoping for a colleague, but well, at least we have another experimental subject. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. What a dump. Well, it isn't exactly the startler, I'll admit, but... Senora, senor, the best people in the house. drag me to this guy, this unupholstered sewer. Oh, I find this place rather amusing. 
Your great southwest has a certain uh, flavor, no? No. I don't happen to be in the mood for a cook's tour of our great southwest. If it wasn't for that forced landing, we'd be in Mexico getting married by now. But, my dear, you can't blame me for the motor trouble. Those things will happen to the best of planes. Well, it didn't have to happen on my wedding day. No, you're acting childish, and that's not you. After all, being able to adapt oneself to any situation is the mark of the true sophisticate. <laughs> I'm sorry. And you're not angry with me? Of course not, Jan. J. Masterson is the name. May I? I beg your pardon. May I say you are beautiful, my dear? Very beautiful. And good. Very kind of you. Yes, you. The plane is ready, huh? Not for some time. The pilot is having considerable trouble. Spend a small fortune for a plane. Hire the best pilot I can get. And what happens? Well, Wu, what are you waiting for? Get back to the plane. Yes, master. Certainly good to see you. I've been looking for you for two days. I'm sorry, but I felt like a little trip. We missed you, sir. Dr. Harrison wishes to see you, you know. <laughs> I know, George. But I don't want to see him. I don't get this. Who are you and what's this all about? I'm his nurse, miss. His nurse? Yes, you see, Mr. Masterson is... No, no, George. I wouldn't do that. You see, I like this lady.
her? Very much. She's fascinating. There's a dancer, of course. I don't like her. insane killer. He's local. He'll kill all of us before you can reach him. Thank you, George. Well spoken. I only did what had to be done. George! Don't take another step. This lady is my friend. And nobody shall hurt her. I will kill her first. The car, George. Excellent. You'll sit with me. But, Mr. Masterson, she's not going with us. Not going with us? You must, my dear. You're in danger. But we've got to get to the landing field. Landing field? Very well, I shall take you there. Let me talk to the sheriff. Doreen, dear, you sit up here in front. Miss Doreen is going to sit with me, aren't you? Yes. Yes, of course. There's a dead woman lying right here on the floor. That's right, Sheriff. He shot her dead. No. She's right where she says. Nobody touched a thing. We... Sheriff, the body just got up and walked out of here. Ready for the takeoff. All set to go, Phillips? Sorry, sir, but one of the engines still acting up. Whatever it is, I can't find the bus. It's probably nothing serious. Can't we take off anyway? No, sir. I can't take that chance. You're the captain. How much longer do but you think I, dear young man? I want to fly. You you want to? I've always wanted to fly. 
Yes, now I will. Sorry, sir. But I'm the one who decides whether we fly or not. I command. And thou shalt obey. Is he kidding? He ain't kidding, mister. You'd better do as he says. We fly now. You go first. Listen, the police! At last! Don't be afraid. I won't let them harm you. Get in, quick. Come along, George. Now we will all fly. on course. How long do you think it will take us, Phillips? If everything goes all right, about an hour and a half. It's wonderful up here. So close to heaven. Wait a minute. Something wrong with this gyro compass. If somebody's fooled with the setting. We've been flying 100 degrees off course. I know. Just stay calm, please. Nothing seriously wrong so far. It's getting worse, much worse. I'll have to go down. Belts. This can't last much longer. And please remain calm. Can't you find the landing spot, Phillips? Not yet. But I am trying for that mesa dead ahead. Do you think we'll make it? I don't know, sir. Keep your fingers crossed. Miss Culbertson, no smoking. Okay, Captain. But may I ask where we are? Somewhere over Mexico at an altitude of 1,500. I'm with a dying engine. Okay. Doesn't do us any good, not in this ship. Birds fly without motors, and so will we. Mister, I don't know who you are or what you are, but this bird won't fly. When a bird is sick, he has to land. And our bird is sick, very sick. The sick I shall heal. The good I shall protect. We've got a chance. I'm going down. Hold tight. It'll be a rock. Hold on, everybody. This looks too short. I'll have to break the run. Close. I want to talk to you. Right. I never thought he'd make it, Phillips. But we did, sir.
secret girl, Miss Culberson. Oh, thank you, Captain. I like it here. Our voices sound strange up here. Do you hear that? It must be the echo of our voices, my dear, thrown back at us from the front. Two days ago, he got away from us. I've been hunting him ever since. I caught up with him in that border dive just before I killed that dancer. I tried, but I couldn't stop him. Why did he kill her? How did he get that gun? Nobody knows why he kills. He just wants to, and he does. Where he got that gun? Probably bought it. He has lots of money all the time. Doesn't mean a thing to him. Can't we get that gun away from him? I'll try, Captain. You can bet on that. But for the sake of all of this, don't try to rush or force him. Leave it to me. All right. May I smoke now, Captain? Oh, no, not yet. I have to look at the gas tanks first. Now, Miss Culbertson, you may smoke. Mm, thank you, Captain. Any idea where we are, Phillips? I think so, sir. We're in Mexico, about 120 miles below the border, on top of a mesa rising 600 feet above the desert. 600 feet? That's right. Suck up in the air like a... like an island in the sky. I suppose we can't walk down from here. Not unless you're a human fly. Sorry, Captain. Haven't been with the circus for years. It's wonderful. So close to heaven. I'd better get that flare and the flashlight. We'll need some light. What's that? Something moves in there. I don't like it here. Not a bit. Oh, if ever I had a nightmare, this is it. Who could be out there? I don't know, Miss Culbertson. Well, it could be a very natural cause. An old dead branch breaking off or a falling tree. I wouldn't worry too much. Well, here comes Wu. Now we can have a fire. Did you hear that noise out there, Wu? Yes, Master. You heard? Did you see anything? The curtain of darkness veiled the sharpest eye. We saw nothing. Well, let's get that fire going. I'll be back in a minute. this into the air. Our only plan had worked. How do we know it was seen? Well, we don't, sir. All we can do is hope. Sorry, Miss Culberson. No glass. Oh, that's all right, Blue. It's a relief to be informal once in a while. I think I'll eat something. I feel hungry. Shut up, you fool. You were the fool, Jan. Remember his gun? A hungry animal knows no fear. No, thank you. Not brandy just before dinner. Sorry, sir, to disillusion you, but there's no food on this ship. Not even a K-ration. Thank you, sir. That helped. I'm going to look around. What for? 
can't see anything. Well, we need this flashlight here. I have this. Does that give out enough light? Sure, I use it at the sanitarium all the time. It's past my dinner time, dear. Aren't you hungry? But, Mr. Masterson, we have no food with us. George will bring it. He always does. wasn't seen by anyone. How will we get off this Mercer? To be honest, sir, I don't know. We can't do anything decisive until daylight. so attentive. But even I can do some things for myself. So I noticed. And, uh, no offense, ma'am. You scare easily, don't you, Captain? He does need I'm going with you, Grant. Anything's better than to sit here and wait. May I suggest that we wait here until Phillips finds out what happened? You'll be safer here. Are you concerned about my safety? George is out there and in trouble. I'll go. Anyone who wants to come along can do so now. I'd like to stroll before dinner. Since you insist, we all go. You come too. Yes, Master. Up there, put some more wood on the fire. Ways to hold each other's hand and form a line. If you don't mind, I believe it's better, Mr. Van Croft, if you hold on to Mr. Masterson's coat. And will you bring up the rear? Your George.
end of the trail. Can you see anything down there? Only a black, gaping hole. Light won't reach bottom. Now you wait here. I'll try this alone. It looks too narrow. One wrong step and we may all go over. Go back and tend to five for the living. Poor George. Was well, not a thing we can do for him. I'll stand close to the underbrush. I'll have to get by. That noise is not falling branches. Something's moving in there. scratch, all right, but nothing serious. I'll dress it as soon as we get back to the plane. I'd suggest we all stay away from these thorns. Oh, oh. oh look, the skirt's ruined. So is his heel. But you weren't hurt, Miss Cullis. No, not a bit. May we go on now, Phillips? Uh, yes, sir. Let's go. that bottle of yours, Captain. I sure could use another drink. I think we all could stand a little drink after this experience. <laughs> How about you? Stop. 
nothing we can do to get help. Now, the only thing we can do, that's send up a flare. If help doesn't come by morning, we'll make a signal fire. But meanwhile, I'd suggest we get some sleep. Got a long night ahead of us. Do you expect any of us to sleep after, after what happened tonight? Well, maybe not sleep, but at least you'll get some rest. But we're all in danger. Whatever killed George may attack us. Take it easy, sir. I'll stand guard and keep the fire going. My eyes open. Well, we all could use a little rest. But remember now, we are putting our lives in your hands. I realize that, sir. Doreen, dear. <laughs> Why don't you try to make yourself a little comfortable? Try to get some rest. I'll try. The darker shadows of the night will melt away with the morning sun. Mr. Masters, but you think you better get some sleep? Is it bedtime? Yeah. Yeah, it's bedtime. I'll wake you when morning comes. Didn't mean to wake you. I wasn't asleep. You nervous? No. I was just thinking. Philip, why do you ignore me? Is that what you were thinking about? Yes. I resent it. You're not used to it, huh? Do you really dislike me that much? I don't dislike you, Miss Coates. But you don't approve of me, is that it? You think I'm marrying him for his money. Well, aren't you? I'm very fond of him. But you don't love him. Well, I'm not exactly mad about him, if that's what you mean. But I am fond of him. And he can give you nice things. Oh, well, yes. Why not? He can give me security, for one thing. And that's important. Don't you think? Why should you care what I think? I don't, exactly. It's just... I'd like you to understand me. I'd like you to understand me. I think I do understand you. Oh, no, you don't. You can't. Oh, yes, I can. I've had my hard knocks, too. I've had to work ever since I was a kid. Some of it wasn't very much fun. Well, I guess it boils down to what you want out of life. What is for you, Grant? Sincere. Real. 
someone who'd, who'd stick by me when the chips are down. One who wants me only for what I am, not for what I have. thing to do. Grant, look! Take it easy, Miss Culbertson. Your imagination's getting the best of it. This is no imagination. It was there, I saw it. What did you see, dear? I couldn't sleep. Phillips and I were sitting here talking, and there was a noise. I looked up, and I... I saw some women and little men. He seemed... unreal. No offense intended, Miss Culbertson, but I know what strange tricks our minds can play on us. Yes, I know, Phillips, but I'm sure I saw it. Where's you comb, my dear? Comb? Oh, I guess I lost it out there somewhere. But I gave it to you. We must find it. That comb is a valuable heirloom of my family. What do you mean by we? If you think I'm going out there once more, you're crazy. I didn't intend you to go. Who will go and look for it? May I have the light? Oh, don't be a fool! He who serves well will also serve in danger. The wanderer in the valley of darkness shall have my guidance and protection. Okay, Wu. If you feel that way about it, I won't stop you. But don't hesitate to use that gun. I hope you know how. There's a day to be born and a day to die. you to realize that if Wu doesn't come back, you will be responsible. I'll never touch that comb again, even if he finds it. I still have my heirloom. You make me... And you are a coward, sir. What? Why are you... You're very brave, aren't you, since Masterson no longer has a gun. Let go of me, or do you want to lose your job? I haven't had the opportunity to tell you yet, but I quit when Wu went out there in your orders. <laughs> something in mind for the girl and the pilot, the other I shall dispose of. What's the matter, Wu?
necessarily. Oh, he's dead? Yeah. You murdered him! Back away from us! Back away! Thank you. No more water on that fire. Quick! Just keep it moving, Elaine. Well, remember, we haven't seen him yet. Aren't you afraid, Grant? I'm scared stiff. If you're frightened, what do you call him? I can't stand it. I'm getting out of here. Don't be a fool. The only thing keeping you back is our fire. He'll recover consciousness in a moment or so. Be perfectly sane again. It's unfortunate he left us in such a state before. I understand that he was committed to an asylum, attempted to uh, kill Tarantella. Grant, look. It's the dancer from the cafe. I saw him kill her. Amazing the durability of my creations. Dr. Aranya. Spanish for spider. We meet again, Doctor. Again? Did I leave here? Yes. I seem to remember vaguely that. Yes, you escaped just before, Doctor, and we'll, you let us a merry chase recovering you. Why? Why not just kill me? Why bring me back? Unfortunately, I still need your help. I'll give you one more chance oh. to change your mind. No, never. Nothing you can do will ever make me a party to this. Tarantella. No, you're not going to torture him anymore. Come in. Don't you fool! Fool? I don't think so. In just a few moments, this will explode and destroy you and me and all of your terrible creations. Doctor, you're a man of science. You wouldn't destroy the greatest achievement of science. I had us, yes, but I'm a human being, too, and that's where we differ. You two have got a chance. Through that door, down the corridor in the rock. Hurry! And who is he? What is this place? A brilliant madman. Hurry, there are only seconds left. What about you? Go, dog, you go. No, no! Sing around you. Your creations can grow a new arm or leg, but nothing can survive fire. stumbled and staggered across that desert before he found it. Well, that's about the story. Believe it or not. Grant. How do you feel, honey? All right, I guess. I've just been telling them our story. They don't buy it. I think he did. He's very like that. That's the truth. Now, don't worry about it. You're going to be all right in a couple of days. Just a little too much sun on the bare head. If anybody thinks I'm going to load one of my trucks with oil and send it up on top of a mountain to burn a bunch of imaginary spiders. Yes, you're right, Dan. Common sense tells you there isn't anything to his story, doesn't it? Giant spiders on a desert mesa. Fantastic. Peppy is just a superstitious native. True, no one has ever been on Sapa Mesa, but it's just like any other bit of table land. Not a thing different about it.